And welcome back. As you can see, we just saved uh, um, Scalebrook. So now we're going to make our way back. You see a camp with a wagon and two people on the edge of the path. Behind them, Black Saddle towers up above a thick, dark forest, about a half a day's journey away. Hmm. You don't want to give them a shock, so you address them while you're still a distance away. Hello, friends. Is there any space by your fire? The two traders look up and visibly jump when they see you three dwarves. Ah, hello! Ah, yes, of course! Lovely. It doesn't escape your attention that you seem to be causing the traders some uneasiness. But you take up their offer and sit down. The twins follow your example. We're only travelers. We're looking for someone who's said to live on Black Saddle. A hermit. Someone who lives here? The traders exchange amazed looks. If they live here, they must be mad. Normally, we wouldn't stop and rest here, but the horses are too exhausted. Our departure from Perista was delayed, and we must have driven them too hard. Hold on. Okay, we're back. Sorry, I needed to go somewhere. Why does Black Saddle make you feel uneasy? It doesn't look particularly inviting, but it's only a mountain. Only a mountain? You don't know the legend? The trader looks at you and the twins for affirmation, but you all shake your heads. Black Saddle was once known as Cloud Piercer, and it towered up into the heavens, the upper slopes of pure gold and the summit covered in snow. The humans wanted to attain this wealth, but the smooth slopes and the dazzling summit made the climb impossible. They called on the dwarves to help them. They were able to tunnel up through Cloud Piercer to the top, but they hollowed it out and carried away the gold. The humans demanded that the treasure be shared, but the dwarves refused, and as they argued, the mountain began to tremble. Huh. There were too many holes inside for it to hold together. It collapsed and buried both greedy parties underneath it. The mountain lost its tremendous size and its beauty, and ever since has haunted both humans and dwarves with its erosive hatred, causing even the rocks to turn black over time. <laughs> Never heard of it. Sounds like human tittle-tattle. Dwarves would never hollow out a mountain so much that it collapses. That is true. That is true. You come from Parista? How are things there? No news to speak of, I'd say. Well, except for Nudin the Knowledge Lusty. <laughs> you know Nudin the Knowledge Lusty. Lot Yonan introduced him to you many years ago during a visit. What about him? Oh, nothing really. Just rumors. You nod at the trader to continue. He's behaving strangely and disappears into his tower for days on end. Man, he looks ill, apparently. Well, that's what someone I know said. Perhaps he got a spell wrong. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. Not again? After a march through the thick pine forest, Black Saddle, the sinister tabletop mountain, and your journey's destination rises up before you. Are you sure that the Famulus lives here? Yes, according to Lot Yonan. Although you try to put a lot of assurance into your voice, you too see no signs that anyone lives here. No castle, no tunnel, no camp. There's nothing here but mountain. Then we'll have to take a closer look. You do that, scholar. We'll be waiting for you here. You think about objecting, but it would just be a waste of breath. Found anything? A hidden camp? A secret doorway? Gold? 
No. Not yet. An old tree. Looks like it could fall down at any moment. can only climb a little way here. Oh, there must be a better way. There we go. I should be able to get up here. Is a no, forget it. Definitely a rock face. There's something engraved on it. You realize with surprise that they are runes in the Dwarven language. Built with the blood of our enemies, be unyielding as the rock, and soak the land in their blood. 
Ah, oh, shit. I haven't been talking that entire time. Sorry. Ugh. I thought I was talking there, but... <clears throat> uh, turns Hello. out I wasn't. Oh, well. Let's just continue. Hmm. Very odd. Master Garen. Lot Yonan sent me to bring some items back to you. My inquiries are almost at an end. That means I can finally go to be with my sunshine. I have never been to Greenglade, but I think I will like it there. Mm. I deposited my most valuable things in the grave of Horangarth before my departure and secured it with magic. The password is... You recognize the following words as rune names, but they're written in the learned language, so you don't know which they are. Huh. Yeah. Greenglade. Oh, great. Pilfer. Taking a lamp. Oh, I didn't mean to lie yet. You see sketches and notes on the architectural features, statues, and wall reliefs. It seems Garen spent a lot of time studying this place. Maybe he's kind of a, a dwarf historian, or maybe he's just a treasure hunter. Hmm. Hello? Is anyone there? Reassuring. It looks as though Garen lived in the fortress for a while. It also seems that he left several lunar orbits ago. I'll take it's some provisions. Stealing, it would just be a shame if the provisions went off. Exactly. And look at that, we'll be fine. Born of stone, forged in battle. Arise, reborn from the blood of the enemy. You're not sure if you really want to know what was once in this basin. The whole place gives you the feeling that a decent dwarf shouldn't hang around too long. Hmm. They sound very vicious, these dwarfs, huh? Oh. Ah. Oh. We need to stop double clicking. This is very nice, though. Oh. I kind of expected a cutscene, but still. The fortress belongs. It belongs to the dwarf haters. Dwarf haters. Really. What's up there? Can we get up there? No. Hmm. Ruins. There's one on that wall. But it doesn't look like any of the others. Ah, might as well read this stone tablet. Lorimba's dwarves are not only as unyielding as a mountain, they are also as destructive as an avalanche and would batter into lesser kingdoms just as relentlessly. The four should find no salvation in Vrakus, only eternal damnation, so that they suffer indescribable torment between the worlds. You have heard Lovely. of the dwarf haters, but this is the first time you have read their hateful words. You feel sick and turn away. Is 
So the question is, how did they set up? Like, this is all pretty intricate stone working here. No, no! Damn it! I didn't want to leave. <sighs> Let's at least try and get the provisions, right? Graves. Could be buried here. Birdlings. Right. So, we know that this is the first Room. symbol. Clear. Because it says up there. Maybe this one? No, hold on, I've done this wrong. I wanted to light this one first. Oh, it's actually staying lit. Okay. Sounds right. So that must mean... Yay! <laughs> first time. <laughs> ah! That's it. And don't worry, I don't have a wiki open or anything. That was honestly the first time. Garen's most valuable belongings. Letters from his lover, a silk scarf that must have belonged to her, and a uh, medallion. I'll be greedy. Oh, the universe is going to hate me because I took this dead guy's medallion. But then again, he is buried in the keep of the dwarf hairs. Which would inquire that I guess it's okay to steal from him. Wow, look at that view. That's a pretty nice view. Oh, wow. We climb down real quick, huh? Okay, let's talk to the twins. They're probably going to be surprised at what we have to say. I would be as so, well. So, Scholar, what are the results of your inquiries? There is an abandoned fortress in the mountain, and I think it belonged to the thirdlings. Boindil's eyes narrow. The blasted dwarf killers! A thirdling fortress? Here! In the middle of Girdlegard? We must let High King Gundorf know about this. seem very relaxed about this, huh, The fortress has been long abandoned by the looks of it. Anyway, I can't go to Ogre's death until I've completed my quest. Goren is in Greenglade. Hmm. Huh. Uh, very sensitive question, but... A thirdling fortress? Here, in the heart of Girdlegard. That's... That's strange, isn't it? And worrying. But they've always been wily. They move in the shadows and kill there too if they can. Do you know their story? I've read about it. Lorenver, their progenitor, rejected the name that Vrakas gave him, who in turn did not give him any special talent, so his kingdom studied war. It helps them defending the East, but it also meant they ended up confronting the other kingdoms. No dwarf would ever even think of injuring one of his kind. Never mind killing them, but the dwarf killers are proud of it. When they were even more powerful, they wanted to become the rulers of all dwarves. They are envious of our skills. They haven't been heard of for a long time, but you can be sure there isn't a single dwarf alive who doesn't hate them. Huh. So... Okay, I... That still doesn't explain why they have a fortress here. Like, if they work in the shadows, that means were they the dwarfs that were originally here, who came in to mine the gold, or were they the dwarfs that just came afterwards? The High King, why do you want to bring me to him? <sighs> All right then. It's about the choice of the new High King. Dandagar, the King of the Fortlings, is with his entourage in Ogre's death and is supposed to ascend the throne. But our acting High King Gundrabur wants to prevent that from happening. 
He fears that Gandagar wishes to instigate a war against the elves. But what have I got to do with that? Boindil is about to say something, but is silenced by a nudge in the side from his brother. Go High ahead. King Gundrabur will explain everything when the time comes. You look distrustfully from one twin to the other. Boindil has donned an innocent expression, and Boendal doesn't give you the impression that he has anything else to say on the matter. The plot thickens. What does this King Gandagar have against the elves? Dwarves and elves just don't get along. Rakus and Satalia made us that way. That's true, actually. I know that, but <laughs> going to war for just that after all this time? Well, there must be more behind it. They say that the King of the Fourthlings is full of hatred and is a hothead in this matter. Whatever, your High King must wait. I have a quest to carry out in Greenglade. But our quest is... Boindil raises a placatory hand and throws <laughs> his rucksack onto his back in preparation. Let it be, dear brother. Look at him. He has made like his Boindale. decision and you will not be able to change his stubborn dwarven mind. You can't help but smile. I like him. He's a bit crazy and sometimes a bit pointless in combat in my opinion in comparison to his brother and me, but still very useful. Right, let's go to the fortress of Steepton. Hey, uh, Commander. So I want, want some money. There's still orcs down here in Clamstead. But, hmm. Well, let's procrastinate, shall we? We actually never been to Axdale. And we got plenty of food. Are there many, any or no? There's no more orc hordes to be dealing with. Several wagons full of building materials pass you by on the way to Goodwater. The village's fortifications still show evidence of the orcs' attack, but they are making good progress with the repair work. Oh, it's just... there they are, the dwarves, Goodwater saviors, come in. There's always a warm meal and a welcoming bed for you here. Uh, I could get used to this. Oh well. Let's see what's going you on here. You see a light through the tree some way from the path. It inevitably brings to mind your encounter with the woodcutters. Thinking about it, they do deserve it. Boindil grins widely, and before Boendal can stop him, he stomps off. You lie awake in your camp Damn. and think about the woodcutter's oh, no. roast that you had for dinner. <laughs> the rabbit was the best thing you've eaten in a long time. It tasted of victory. Ha 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 ha. Oh wow. So how is the relations working? Like we definitely have to go to Axdale now. Because I'm now curious to get to Axdale. I'm glad that mercenary guy turned out to be so friendly though. Like, I know we did save him and everything. Axeldale is shrouded in an eerie silence as you approach. There's not a single fishing boat on the river, and many of the houses are now just burnt-out ruins. The big-nosed beasts have made a grim job of it. Seems they don't like fish. Boendal gives his brother a reproachful look. There are dead bodies everywhere, but it seems to you that there should be more of them. For a brief moment, you hoped that the villagers had fled. But then you realize that the orcs were probably hungry after their victory, Lovely. and your stomach turns. Boendal lays a hand on your shoulder. Let's go. There's nothing more we can do for these people. But maybe there are others we can help. Oh, yeah, speaking of others. Three, nine, two, no, 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 no. We have to make a trip here. Oh well, next time we're going back down here to save that farmer in Clamstead.